Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about an operating system that is almost entirely written in Rust called Redox OS. This is their website. There's not really much to this besides links to the GitLab and releases and that kind of stuff, along with this nice little screenshot of a GUI. That's what really caught my attention when I first saw this. So if you don't know what Rust is, it's a programming language that's supposedly memory safe. If I remember well, it's developed by Mozilla, but I may not be 100% right about that. Uh, and essentially, to a lot of people, it's sort of their superior version of Go or C, despite Go also being memory safe. So the motive behind making something like Redox OS, besides reworking the idea of Unix, which as you well know is what operating systems like GNU Linux and BSD are sort of all about. They're trying to be like Unix. This is trying to be like Unix, but have features like a microkernel. So over here, microkernel design. So the kernel is very, very small, not monolithic. And the the idea behind all of this is just write it all in Rust so it's memory safe for security reasons, among other things, supposedly. You can read more about it in the documentation. But in today's video, I've actually pulled up a VM of Redox OS. So here we are with a VM of Redox operating system. I set it to the full resolution of my screen so it looks like I'm running it off hardware. And that's an interesting thing about Redox operating system because it actually can run on some real hardware, which is very impressive for something that's essentially written from scratch. I mean, that is highly impressive. Anyway, so the username over here is root and the password is, well, password, at least for the default installation. It did take a while, just note this, that I didn't download an ISO for this. I compiled it all from source, which takes a while. Compile compiling Rust from source. I think it'd be the same with other operating systems. I've never compiled many operating systems from source, but I did have to compile it, so there's always that. Anyway, okay, so as you can see now that we're in, we now have a nice little graphical desktop over here. I'm going to take a look at the, all the included programs. There's not a whole lot to Redox operating system. The first thing that pops out is the web browser. That's probably one very interesting part of the operating system because having an entire web browser work on an operating system that you made, that, that, that is quite impressive. And as you can see over here it, it does work the window sizing is a bit odd but this is the redox os website it does look a bit weird i'm gonna go to my website to see if maybe it looks a little better just gonna delete this you can tell this entire web browser is very very basic not many features here so let's see if my website loads and it does my website does have a background yeah there it is and html5 video but i don't think this supports html5 video so it's not really loading. Um, maybe I'll try a bit of a more complex page. I'll try something like uh, my image board. So chan.denshi.live. Hopefully it can load that. And if not, then I don't know. Okay, so it, it can load it, but it's having a bit of trouble with this CSS, as you can see. So it's not entirely functional, but the general stuff is, is there. The image board information's there. So you wouldn't be able to do anything complex like watch YouTube videos or something on this, but you can access basic HTML websites and have them semi-work sometimes. Anyway, so that was that. The terminal emulator is interesting because it uses um, a shell called Ion over here, local share Ion. So I believe it's similar to Fish. It's not POSIX compliant, which some people may not like. Ah, you can zoom into the terminal emulator. That's that's quite nice. All right, let's try uh, doing something you could do in Fish or, or some kind of autocomplete thing. So let's try going to the root directory, maybe Etsy or something. And then if we run it again, yeah, as you can see, it, it has autocompletion like Fish. So that's some of the features it has. I believe it has some other cool features you can take a look at. There's not much besides just a few basic configuration files and .config in the .local folder, which, you know, is good because it's quite minimalist. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the file manager. Oh, that's a, now that is a very minimalist file manager. I'm a fan of that. It, it even opens up the text editor. Look at that. I guess that's a text editor. Um, so you got, you know, all your directories. It looks like a regular Unix system. Everything you sort of expect is here. We already took a look at the text editor. It's very rudimentary. You know, it got basic functions. Functionality. It's not exactly super impressive, just a text editor. Let's take a look at the calculator. Well, that is a calculator. Very, very minimalist, once again. Just a, you know, got basic operations, that kind of thing. All right. Calendar. This probably gets a little bit more complex. Oh, it's taking a while to load. Oh, here we are. I'm interested in seeing what kind of like, uh, 
kind of graphics or what kind of like UI tool set or whatever they're using for this. I can't really recognize this directly from just this. It's probably made by them or it's something with Rust, this uh, UI toolkit that they're using here. Because everything looks consistent and it's probably themable or something. So the viewer, I'm assuming this is for uh, viewing images and it only views one and that's the background.png. I don't think the web browser supports downloads so we can't really download anything. And I'm assuming that's the character map and it's got, well, that's that, that those are characters indeed. That, that is a character map. I'm trying to look for anything more that I could possibly do. I believe we can download some stuff in uh, the terminal, but I don't think there actually is any form of like proper package manager. You're just meant to clone everything or download everything and compile it from source, although I'm not entirely sure about that. If we list our bin directory, maybe we'll find some weird commands to take a look at it. As you can see, it, it's quite minimalist. They do include screen fetch. I don't really know why, but they, they have that by default. So that's that's fun. I hope you enjoyed this short little video about Redox operating system. I'm sorry I couldn't really find a lot of stuff to talk about on this. But as you can see, it works in virtual machines and it's impressive because it, it can work on some real hardware. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.